Hey, everybody, welcome to your future stars for forecast on a two year old Tuesday. Very happy to have with me alive and well <laughs> an Eclipse and ESPY award winning jockey right here, Jose Ortiz, um, who, if you don't know, went through just a horrific looking spill uh, this past week at uh, Saratoga. And I'm, I'm not going to show the video just because it was so dramatic. Everybody, the horse is okay. But Jose, can you take us through what happened? Uh, I was riding the two-year-old Philly for Wesley. Uh, we were approaching the wire. Uh, she started getting tired and it was a spot, very tight spot and uh, Four horses got together, and unfortunately, I clipped heels, and, and we went down. But thankfully, the feel is good, which is the main thing, and I'm, I'm doing okay, too. No, I'm so glad to hear that. I actually have video of uh, Same Old Fears. Here she is. Yeah. Alive and well, everybody. Uh, this is from Riley Ward, uh, Ward's of Twitter feed. So you can go there and actually see for yourself that she is fine. Um, but it was it was so dramatic and the thing that struck me was did you know that you were going to go down and go down hard because you could almost see your body language well before she actually went to her knees that you were starting to get yourself ready to to roll no honestly i wasn't uh everything so happened so fast everything happened so fast yeah i wasn't ready for it uh, and uh Oh my gosh. Yeah, everything happened so fast. I'm just glad we both make it make it yeah. out okay. Well, it's a testament not only to your athleticism being so fit, but also to the care that the wards put into their horses because for her to take that impact, I mean, obviously she was able to to fare better because she was so physically fit. But I'm just glad you are fine and we can talk about happier things uh so what has i mean you're coming into the saratoga meet having won the title at belmont you actually beat your brother i read by a win um now obviously this puts you a little bit behind but what are you most looking forward to this meet oh, you gotta you gotta come here thinking you're gonna be leading rider yeah uh it's a huge accomplishment and uh yeah i have a setback which is going to be very hard to come back and, and be on, on, on the, on the mix for the leading rider, because I had already run away with it. You know, he, he got good leader on top of, of everybody else. I think he's right now, he got a 14 win lead, 13 yeah. on Louis. So then he ride very light horses every day. And it's going to be kind of hard to catch up, but I think it's time. It's time there, and uh, hopefully we have a safe meet, healthy, no more spills, and maybe we can make a run, uh, hopefully. I think so. Well, I just love the dedication and how far this all goes back for the two of you. You're both from Puerto Rico. Um, and am I, do I, we've talked about this before, but one of my all-time favorite jockeys is Angel Cordero. And he mentored you guys a bit, huh? Yeah, we came to New York and uh, we had a friend in uh, common. So we we start going to his house and he, he showed us some, some uh, replays of him and we enjoy being with him and, and learn a lot from him, share his, his knowledge with us. You know, we appreciate that always. What do you think puts a really good capable jockey uh, you know, in one spot versus an elite jockey who can really read into their horses. I, what What is the difference maker? I think uh, experience is a key. I mean, I'm so, so much better now than I was three years ago. You know, three years is, is a lot. You ride a lot of horses and you learn a lot. And I think uh, we experience, you start knowing your, comp your competition better. Uh, and you develop other skills that you, that you don't have before. And I think you keep improving every day and that will, you keep working hard every day that will separate you from the others. What do you think you're doing better now than you did a couple of years ago? I think uh, the way 
I approach the race as a handicap and um, and honestly, I'm working harder in the morning than I used to work. Well, I mean, that's part of it too. You, you're, I mean, not only from just the physical work in the gym, but the getting on the horses in the morning to uh, getting, you know, that familiarity with them. One of the things that I always find so incredible about what you guys do is many times you're getting on a horse for the very first time ever yeah. when it's race time. And that to me is nuts because generally in equestrian sports, we're developing a relationship with the horse we're riding. You have a very limited amount of time to get to know their quirks and everything. And, and it's all about, I don't know. Do so you have to have some sort of innate feel for it? Right? Yeah. And that's, that's an ability that, that can make a rider better than others. You get that connection quickly with the horse during the post parade. Yeah. I and, mean, and that's why you see a lot of riders probably take horses away from the pony. Sometimes it's to know the horse. Sometimes it's the horse need the warm up, but for me, I, I love to do it with horses that I don't know. So I get to f get a feel from them. Well, yeah. And oh, we have some comments, actually. I don't want people to think that we're ignoring them. Um, actually, going back to what happened, workers' compensation. See, this is part of what is so horrible. It, I mean, thankfully, what happened with you didn't keep you, you know, uh, basically laid up. Um, a lot of times, riders, if they're out, they're out. They're not making any money. Mm hmm and I mean, this is part of the reason why also the organizations like the PDGAF are so important. Um, out of curiosity, I know the event for uh, Jackie Karaoke is coming up there at Saratoga on the 30th. Are you performing? Yeah. You are? Any hint as to what you will be doing? I'll be singing Last Night from the name of it. Oh, 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 I think I, I think I know what you're talking about. I don't know for sure. So I don't want to misspeak and, and yeah. <laughs> myself, but okay. Is Taylor participating your wife? Maybe. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to need the help, but if I think I do that day, she will. Do you have a costume? No, nah, I just. <laughs> nah. no. Okay. Well, that's another question I have for you. Was Taylor, you know, having been a jockey as well, is it harder for her to watch the spills or is it easier for her? Oh, it's easier. When the stuff that happened like Friday, it's a lot easier for her. Yeah, I mean, because I can't panic. imagine. She don't panic, don't get nervous, uh, keep the calm. Yeah. With the kids and my mom get really, really nervous. So she she's the one that keep the calm and she know how it goes. And Gosh, yeah, I can't imagine going through that and having to witness it. But as you said, you know, with her experience, she does have that understanding. Lon saying, yeah. hello, future stars. Well, hello. Welcome back, Lon. Um, Dri Dri I don't know about Dri Drio or Drio, but seeing about listening to the trainers, that probably helps also getting to know your horses. Kelly, Jose has become a fantastic jockey. That's right. <laughs> but you had to have the raw talent, first of all, because I feel like the elites – they, as you were saying, they just understand the horses. And I think that's something you either have or you don't have. And you've had that always. And yeah, there's Anne. She says, good to hear all are okay. And the early relationship with Angel Cordero. I mean, I, I think he's just amazing. And one of my favorite memories was him. Has he told you the story about when he rode uh, Seattle Slough in the Jockey Club Gold Cup? No, I remember. Get that story from him because I, first of all, it's one of the best races you can ever watch of a horse in defeat. But also, I didn't even realize when uh, until, uh, you know, well, I know some people say Angel. I always say Angel. He told us that he actually lost the stirrup during the course of the race. And that made it even crazier when you watch the results. So ask him about it. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um Okay, question. Who do you think are the best European jockeys? Well, I like uh, William Buick a lot. Yeah. I think he put his horses forward, always in good position. But uh, Ryan Moore is excellent also. Yeah. Uh, I like Oshie Morphy of the young ones. I think Tom Marquardt is, is a very good young rider also. There's a lot of them. Uh, they have a different style than us, but they know how to ride race horses. They put the horses in the right spot and, and, and they perform always. 
Well, speaking of Oshie Murphy, um, I actually have a replay here that I think would be fun to watch. And uh, it is actually, let me see, make sure I actually, I, that I actually have it here. Um, I believe, let's see. Yes, I do have it. Okay, so you actually, one of the big wins you had at the Belmont meet wasn't aboard a two-year-old, but it was aboard Far Bridge in the grade one Belmont Derby Invitational. That's actually a race you did win with Oscar Performance, who as a two-year-old, you'd won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf with. So yep. I think it's kind of fun to watch this race, if you don't mind, because this is a horse I'm sure that you're very excited about, right? Very, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead. I'm going to share the screen, and we'll go ahead and pop that up. This is, again, Farbridge in the Belmont Derby Invitational. So tell us about him. He This looked like a horse who was knocking out the door for a while. Yeah, the horse, uh, it got the tendency of logged in a little bit, and last couple of times it's, it's a little difficult to ride in through traffic. Mm -hmm. because that tendency of him kind of logging in a bit. Oh, my goal was to keep him out of trouble every step of the way. Uh, follow a live horse, which I didn't. I followed the one that was a long shot, but I see he was moving well around the quarter pole. So I decided to go in there and it worked out very well. Uh, sitting in a great spot right now. And, and what's going through your head in a race? Like, I mean, when you've got a giant field like this, too. Uh, right now, I'm just happy I'm sitting on where, <laughs> in a great spot right here. Uh, good rhythm. The horse is relaxed. You can see he's not pulling me. He's not fighting with me. Mm -mm. He is happy and relaxed. And uh, I mean, the favorite, the, the other favorite is right in front of me. Yeah. Which which means they're going fast because Calico always on the lead. When he wasn't on the lead, that I, I mean that that they're going pretty fast the the first quarter, which they did on twenty three. Yeah. Then they slow it they slow it down to fifty. But the, <laughs> the damage the damage was already already done the first quarter for them. Well, you and can the see here the, the seven starts stopping and the one he got a better momentum and um cut the corner beautifully. Yeah. What a race. And here oh. we come. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Got a yes. picture perfect trip. Uh, we wish as a jockey is a uh, 10 out of 10, we can get that trip, but it doesn't work out that way. And it looks like, I mean, he it looks like he's finishing, you know, also um, in the mindset of really enjoying what he's doing. Yeah, the horse, he's, he enjoyed what he's doing that day. I think the grass was a little bit heavy that day. And uh, probably take a little bit of his kick away from him. But I think uh, he's a very nice horse. I'm very yeah. excited about him. Uh, I think it should be my big horse this year, hopefully. Do you know Do you know what the next, uh, plan, uh, next race is planned for him? It should be Saratoga Derby. Yeah, Here. I, I yeah. think so. He's a um, legs. He won the Belmont already. Now Saratoga, and then we go back to Aqueduct. I think. Well, what do you notice between the turf courses? Obviously, I mean we're t different tracks. I mean, what, what is? I mean, some of these horses, you know, obviously will get over one track surface better than another. We talk about horses for courses. This is obviously a horse who shows up every time. But how do you approach the different turf courses? The different dirt courses. I just. Uh, I hate uh, to ride the the biases uh, race tracks like speed favorite and stuff like that because that's sometimes it's, it works against you you know like you got a horse that is a closer and you got to ride a get him off his rhythm to be close and stuff like that and the horse doesn't finish as well but if you stay too far then you you got no shot either way. I know the timing is so tough yeah. and it's weird it's for there's so often we see in a lot of the turf races in particular in New York, they do slow it down up front. They slow yeah, it that's down. The, that's, that's just the way the, <laughs> that's just the way we ride here. Uh, but you never gonna, you're not gonna see the horse on the league winning like, <laughs> all the time. The people say, Oh, these guys, they are not, I don't know <laughs> what they keep taking back. I uh, go in 50, but the horse on the list not winning. 
Uh, wh- wh- what do you think it is when we're so used to seeing, you know, those horses coming back if they're actually putting in, you know, what looks to be a more honest clip? If they go in 48, the horses from the back are going to be easier. Like, yeah, right. You think they could, oh, you let it. Uh, they want lot to be aggressive. You can be <laughs> aggressive, but if you don't have the horse to be aggressive with, nothing yeah. you can do. No, I hear you. I, I, can, hear you. I, can, I can look at a race and say, look, it's not speeding here. I'm going to go to the lead. But if my horse is 20 to 1, 30 to 1, eh, I'll probably run a good four because they gave me the lead easy and, and nobody put pressure on me. But either way, the horses, they go in 50 and the winner sometimes is seven length back and they still win. Like that's, I don't know. I think it's the racetrack. People ride different in every racetrack. But I think in New York, it, you got a horse with a shot and they give it to you in 50, you get in a way. Like you, then you're good. But sometimes they let you go in 51, you got no shot and they still get you. Right. Uh, well, I love it. There's a lot of cat and mouse going on out there. A lot of chess play. We know. Right? We, uh, <laughs> like, sometimes, yeah, people, they want to, you know, people going to have their minds better or handicapped. Well, how hard is that for you? How hard is that? When you guys are the ones that are out there, you guys are the ones perched in the, those stirrups and you're, you're hearing the guy who's just sitting back saying, why did you take my horse back, or why didn't you go for it? I mean, yeah, what? yeah, people is it tough? <laughs> always gonna be, always gonna be something. Like yeah. Sometimes you got some, we got some, up, we got a plan, and we go to a to a paddock, and they're trying to see it a different way. Yeah. So now oh, you how like. How hard is that? I mean, when you when you feel well, immediately you, that you know what you should do for a horse, and maybe a trainer has a different idea. Yeah, sometimes you, as as a professional, you got to respect the trainer's opinion and, and, and go with that. And if it doesn't work, you come back and you tell him that you want to ride the horse back, but you want to ride a different way, or or you try to tell him why you think the horse would like prefer. Or, But, I mean, people sometimes, oh, you, ah, why you didn't go to the lead? Sometimes you go to the paddock, my trainer tell me, it's all the two horses with speed, you'd rather come from the from off their pace today yeah not what i wanted but it's just how it works out you know it it is what it is and obviously all the plans can just be laid to waste if the if the start's not good um exactly oh and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a minute with gold sweep but we actually have some more comments here appreciate the time you guys took out of your day and thanks for the show thank you so much rodney for tuning in um jose what are your thoughts on our canadian track woodbine best turf track it is it is a beautiful track and uh, the turf course is great in my opinion the 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 long the stretch is very long it's very long and you know i think it takes you one or two races to get used to it so when I go there, I try to ride two or three races before the big one to get used to that because you got to ride a little bit different. Also, you cannot whip upper hand. You got to be down and you can go above your ear. Like it, it's very strict up there. But the track is beautiful. And going yeah. back to the question, it's, it's not the best, but it's beautiful. How hard is it to keep that? all in mind because I, again, I mean, you guys are already thinking of so much while you're out there. I'll admit, this is me speaking personally. I'm not speaking for anybody for whom I work on or anything. This is my own personal opinion. I don't have a problem with the crop. I don't because I think abuse of the crop or the whip or whatever one wants to call it is obvious. So for me, I feel like when you guys are out there and you're restricted to having to count how many times you can use it while you're already trying to keep mindful of pace, already trying to keep mindful of where the other horses are in the race and everything else that goes into it while you're all up there perched up on, again, your tippy toes in the stirrups. To me, I just, I don't think it's necessary to have to put those, those limits in place because again, I think obvious misuse is obvious. Yeah. You can tell when, when the web is misused. It's very obvious, like you say. That's that's been my point on it. But you know, it's it's an uphill battle right now. Yeah. Uh, 
we have. Sorry. No, it's it, okay. Uh, but that's another how I should tell it. That's another skill we have to develop. Yeah. To not miscount and get penalized. <laughs> yeah. And I believe the count is the same whether it is a route or whether it's a sprint. Yeah, same, same. I, I personally don't. I mean, I. I just, I say this with, you know, an equestrian background as well, not with what you guys do. I rode show horses, but still, you know, um, I personally don't get it, but I, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, we have more comments here. Lazy dog, woof, woof. Thanks for the live stream. You are welcome. Um, oh, this is a good question for Rodney. What does Jose look forward to the most Kentucky Derby day or breeders cup weekend? You got to go with the ladder, right? You're on the breeders cup show. <laughs> Well, it's British Cup is huge because it's a lot of big races. Uh, yeah. But the Derby is the best race for yeah. us to win. Like it's the most prestige, and uh, I look forward for for Derby. Well, you know, it's really I mean, more more than British Cup. I look forward for British Cup, but. <laughs> well, you're a five-time Breeders' Cup winning jockey. One of those wins was, and it, it's, it's really cool, actually. Four of those are on two-year-olds. Yeah. Uh, one of those being Good Magic, and then you ran second in the Kentucky Derby with him. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, that was the year of Justify, so it was a hard year to go up against him. But how cool is it to now see his babies? I mean, Mage, I know you didn't ride him, but still, to see Mage go forward and win the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I mean, awesome. Yeah. Uh ride a horse like him is it was awesome and now see his babies going to the track and do well it's kind of amazing other than i'm getting old but uh it's amazing for for us to you to can't see. say you're old because if you're old and i'm ancient you're not even quite you'll be 30. i looked yep. i looked up uh you're still so young you've accomplished so much you're not even officially 30 years old yet but you will be on my mom's birthday october 2nd um and so i mean gosh what is it let me let me check your earnings because i think it's nuts career earnings and this is just actually going to be north american because um over 226 and a half million just in north america of career earnings that's nuts yeah is there a win that stands out for you above all the others making me think uh, <laughs> uh i have to say the the first british cup i won it always will always stand out because it was something that i that i really really wanted to do it was like a dream come true like I've uh, been thinking. I was thinking for that moment for a long time, and, and mm -hmm. when it happened, so that, that was huge for me. But I think uh, my biggest, biggest win has been the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, um, well, that, yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing. You've won. You were second in the Kentucky Derby. You've won the. You won the Belmont Taprit. You won the Preakness on early voting. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, okay. The other two big races that I think uh, I've been overseas, which were in, in Dubai when I win the Golofi Mile and the UA Derby. Oh, that's amazing. Well, um, before we get to talking about two-year-olds, let's talk about two fillies that you have a connection with, one more so. Let's talk about Alate. Uh, she, she, I got to go hang out with Alate at Claiborne Farm semi-recently. She had just had her tap at full. Uh, we recently saw her first full to race exhilarate debut um, at Belmont earlier this month it, uh, for Belmont Junior was aboard. Yeah. Um, but I know you ride for Mott too. Was there any like, hey, I got to ride a late baby? <laughs> no, you know, Mott, he... I respect Mr. Mott a lot. So uh, I don't really go out and ask for, for any horse. I think he, if, if it was going to be for me, he was going to put me on and you yeah. and Right Junior's great too. He write a lot for him and get on a lot yeah. of horses for me for him in the morning too. So I mean, I mean, I wrote it late. That doesn't mean because I wrote her, I'm gonna write the baby. I understand no. that, and 
I mean, it would have been nice, but it, I don't know. I could have had another horse in the race, uh, whatever. It didn't yeah. work out. I'm just happy to see her run good. Junior gave it a, a great ride. I think moving forward, she'd be better eventually going longer, which she yes. should be. When she go a mile and those kind of races, she'd be great. Yeah, no, for sure. And I agree with that. The more distance, the better. And here is a late in the Alabama at Saratoga. Yeah. I mean, what a cool, what a cool mare she she is. Um, what was that like? I mean, she has such a fan following. Yeah, it was great to be on her. She she was. I mean, one of the best horses I ever rode. Um, you rode some rode, really good horses. You rode Maxfield. Maxfield, uh, LA have to be one of them. Uh, and I didn't, yeah, but, get, getting to see her up close and personal, she's huge too. Oh, uh, that was, I love her. She was the most comfortable <laughs> ride ever. She's big, long neck. She was very quiet. Like I could go away from the pony. She, she does everything right. Uh, and I was in love with her. She, she was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And it showed heart every time. Um, oh, you lost your video. There you are. Uh, but yeah, let's now talk about another filly, and then we're, we'll get to the two-year-olds. Um, I know. You, I, I think it might have just been the ones. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you were the one riding Nest in the Belmont. I did only that time, yeah. Only that time. So you and your brother actually got the exacta there for Todd and Rapoli uh, yeah. with Mo Donegal and Nest. I just have the stretch here because I think it's such a great stretch run, and uh, I, I loved that uh, you were actually. I mean, even though you not riding you were still showing the love for nest and your brother when she won the shuvi this weekend um whoa what what a philly nah she's amazing i think she will dominate the the four-year-old division this year for sure there were a lot of people that thought if she hadn't um stumbled at the start of the race out of the gate that she that she could have really possibly even one i think Would so you... too yeah? yeah 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 i mean what does it take? even even with the stumble if i could run free from the from the three a pole to the quarter pole if i could run free maybe she still could win that's but right I, because I had, she... I had to wait i had to wait 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 too much didn't she get kind of checked over at the start of the race too by another horse? I can't rem I can't no, remember. She stumbled. She stumbled at the start. And then we have a great trip inside. Inside, great trip inside. And then I had to wait until I made his move to make my move outside of him. And that kind of I think it, it cost me. But honestly, we had a we had a good trip, no complaint. How hard is it for a horse to start out of the gate? Um, because a lot of times we hear about how you can be poised and ready to go, but sometimes um, the, the ground underneath, when they go forward, it can kind of fall out from under their hooves, and that's what can lead to a stumble. Yeah, it's unpredictable. Yeah, you just don't know. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine being in a small, enclosed space like that on a big thoroughbred, getting ready to bust out and go, but... Uh, yeah. So you guys have the fortitude there. Uh, gosh, so many comments for you. Let me see here. Um, okay. So, oh, Steve wants to say, and he's a fan. Uh, I always, yeah, I always bet the Ortiz brothers, no matter what the tote board says. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Jose, what is the race during Breeders' Cup weekend that you want to ride in besides the classic, he goes on to say? Beside the classic. Yes. Uh, I know they're all good. <laughs> they all they all big, yeah, they all big. But I look forward wrong. for the two year I look forward for the two year olds. I've been so successful with the two year olds. Yeah. That I really like like the two year olds. I've always been big 
guy on two year olds. Like I always want to get as as much babies as I can mm -hmm. because then you can pick and choose which one you like. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's see here. Golly, we got so much here. Um, I let me go ahead and take this off the screen. Now let's talk about some two year olds. Now, Gold Sweep, I have his Tremont win here and talking about stumbling from the gate. Unfortunately, that's what we saw uh, during the Sanford. But let's watch the Tremont first and show why people were sending this horse off as the favorite. It was for good reason. Um, yep. here's, that, here's that Belmont. And so this is for Steve Asmussen. And this is a really well-bred horse on top of it by Spitestown, who is the champion sprinter, uh, won the Breeders' Cup sprint back in 2004. Then he's out of a Giants Causeway mare. So you get some of that stamina in there. Uh, Giants Causeway, for those of you who don't know, he was Carte Horse of the Year in 2000. And he was also second to Tis Now in that year's edition of the Breeders' Cup Classic. And this Boy's female family actually produced a distaff winner in Stop Charging Maria. So really well bred. Yep. And here he is at four to five, and he's going to win like a one to nine. <laughs> this is just you shaking the reins at him, right? Sorry. No, it's okay. How easy was this win? Very easy. He, I was surprised. That was the first time I rode him. Uh, I was very happy with him. Yeah, I after, would be too. Before and after the race. Uh, fortunately, he he stumbled last time here. In the sun for I think is the name of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have um, the pet on of that. If you want to show it, yeah. talk about it. Now, let me see here. It is, I believe it was on. But I'm still, was... uh, I think he's a very nice horse going forward. Oh, no, uh, for sure. Oh, he's, he's an exciting horse. The way that he actually finished was was really impressive considering the, the start of the race. And I have it right here. I just want to make sure I've got the right file. Okay, so here's the head on. And you are in the nine hole here. So if everybody can just focus attention on the nine hole and we'll go ahead and hit play. And you'll see he comes out and he kind of gets bumped. He, he stumbles and he also kind of gets bumped by the 10. And they're on <laughs> a bobble for Gold Sweep who is last. Yeah. But you, you stayed, you, you didn't panic. Um, on the inside here's I, I remember listening to the post-race analysis and they were talking about how in some cases like that, the jockey panics and will rush the horse up to get in contention and then they completely tire out anyway. You stayed calm here. Um, but how difficult was it for the horse? Well, I mean, very difficult. Very difficult. You got to go to plan B, uh, taking a lot of dirt and, uh, you gave up, uh, lens. I mean, how yeah. far he got beat probably three lane. He gave up, he gave probably more than that in the, in the start. So I think he was the best horse in the race. And I mean, we move forward. I think, uh, he'd be a real player on, on, on the division going forward. Um, is this is do you know if he's going to be po um, pointed toward the hopeful? Uh, I went I talked to Steve uh, the day after I uh, was just asking him about the horse, how he came back from the stumble and stuff. So the horse came back in good order and that will be a decision uh, Steve and the ownership will make now, soon. All right. And now let's talk about another two year old, one that you actually want on turf. Uh, Going to talk about Kodiak Wintergreen for Rusty Arnold. Uh, what can you tell us about this yeah. filly here? Well, the filly run very good first time out. Uh, guy, she got a great uh, education. And then the other day she run awesome, but I think uh, five and a half is a uh, lot. 
a bit too short for her. I think she's gonna be better when she stretch out a bit more than than five and a half. So uh, very exciting about her. Uh, how how do you approach? Because you, you have oh sorry, go ahead. You can see when she passed the wire, she put her ears right up. So that means that she she can do more going forward. Great gallop out. So we I'm very excited about her. I think she's very nice. What do you think it is about? I mean, the fact that you've had as much success as you've had on with the juveniles um, on the biggest days when there's so much going on, crowds, everything. Uh, what is this? Uh, is it just the confidence level that you bring to the equation with them? Because I feel every two year old needs to have a jockey who's not questioning things. They have to have somebody who's making confident decisions and and giving them that comfort of, hey, I got this. I'm just going to show you what you need to do, where you need to go. Trust me. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to stay calm. That's one of the main. It's one of the main things for two year old. You gotta remain calm, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be on them. They gotta, it's on their mind. They gotta be well schooled on the paddock. And you don't wanna see them too hot. You just wanna see them calm. And so much you can do. Yeah. Because yeah. even before you get on them, they, they probably, sometimes they just wear out. They, waste a lot of energy during this sad putting the saddle on them and stuff like that do you have a favorite condition in terms of when it comes to riding do you prefer riding the older horses do you prefer uh you know prefer turf dirt long short or do you just love it all <laughs> no i'm pretty good about everything i'm easy going has it just always just been a passion like to too? Yeah, I like to write them all. Oh, I, like I love it. Uh, here's a good question. Does Jose know that he is a horse racing superstar? <laughs> uh, uh, What's yeah, it like I when mean, you go back to Puerto Rico? I mean, they, 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 you must be like a national hero, you and your brother. Yeah. Yeah. The people don't know the racetrack. Yeah. Every, we go everywhere we go. We They recognize us, but... I just, I'm just a normal guy. I like to go work, come home, yeah. lay low. Yeah. Uh, hi, Pelusa. Hi, watching the, the, for the transmission. Pelusa from Toronto. Hi. Okay, uh, Rodney, Jose. What were your thoughts on the Haskell Stakes? Did you want? Uh, so, is the three-year-old division wide open? You've run a couple different three-year-olds throughout the season. Do you have one that you're going to be riding coming up? And yeah, no, what were your impressions of the Haskell if you were watching? Well, I think it was a great race. Uh, and the rabbit kind of messed up everything for Buffer Horse. Yeah, for, for Arabian, yeah. Yeah, Arabian night. And I hate to see that. So in 99 to 1 going into the lead on 22, I mean. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, but uh, I think it was a good race. I think Matron, very decent. They building up for what is going to be a, a great summer for a horse. Hopefully, it stays healthy. Uh, I think it's a nice horse. The winner proves that he's improving. Mandela, a Hall of Fame. Mikey. Gave him a great ride, Hall of Fame also. Uh, the horse proved that he can be on the big show and that he's going to be a player. Uh, yeah. Go right, go right. We, we're going to have to see the Jim Dandy next next uh, Saturday. You got him out? Uh, I'm not sure, but we're going to see how to Forte come back. Yeah. Does your does, does Arad talk about Forte at all to you? I see Forte in the track almost every day. So I see him working the other day. We, they put blinkers on. He looked very good. I also been on Forte a few oh, times yeah. working. It. Yeah. And uh, I think he's the most talented trio on the division. 
but uh, I think I think he was on the first half of the season. He was a little bit unlucky in the Belmont. Like the horse missed the Derby. Like mm -hmm. came to remind on a half. It's How hard, hard is that on a horse? Uh, How, very because hard, very hard. I mean, I he hadn't run. Yeah. Todd did an amazing job getting yeah. ready for the Belmont. For the second, it was a huge race, it's missing all the all the big races that will get you ready for that one. It's very hard. But uh, I think he was the most talented early on the season in the first half. Now in the second half, I think it's all the play, all the players like Angelo won the Belmont. I think Mage is going to be a big contender. Mm -hmm. The horse that just won the Haskell appears in the picture now. Yeah. Uh, Buffer always come up with something. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I think it's going to be a great, great uh, second half of the season for the three-year-olds. I love it. Oh, here's a question for you. What's the best move Mike Smith showed you? Speaking of the Haskell, Mike nice. Smith winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's crazy. How old is Mikey going to be now, right? And and he's just, I mean. <laughs> yeah, and he's still winning the big ones. Yes, it's it's really, it's really, I, he's such a good person too, huh? Yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah. He's staying in shape. He's such discipline that's why he's still writing he's very disciplined and great guy too absolutely simon gosh you you have so many fans jose i gotta tell you <laughs> um humble man uh simon he's modest and talented sherry glad to hear you're feeling better and back riding tomorrow i know it's nuts you have so many rides lined up all week how are you feeling about getting back in the saddle I mean, I know you've been riding in the morning, back. but I wanted to back in the afternoon. I wanted to ride Sunday, uh, but uh, my agent is saying, uh, no, no, smart thing to do another day off. And then, and then today. I say, okay, yeah. I'm going follow the directions. And, uh, but uh, I'm excited. I want to go out there as soon as I can. So I can't wait for tomorrow. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, let's, let's see here. Good luck. Good luck to Jose Luis Ortiz. Um, here's another question for you. Jose, last year Breeders' Cup was in Keeneland. This year it is in Santa Anita. What adjustments do you think you will need to make? Well, more on turf than dirt because on Breeders' Cup day, the dirt in Keeneland is pretty fast. Santanita always plays kind of fast too, but pretty fair. Uh, turf, definitely, uh, Santanita is a lot faster, a lot quicker than than, than Keeneland. Especially Keeneland in the fall can get a little bit wet underneath, and it helps the, the horses coming off the pace a little bit. But yeah, most mostly you got to adjust on, on turf. But... Those horses are so good that running the Breeders' Cup that they overcome everything. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Uh, Carlos, hello from Puerto Rico. Ah, saludos from Venezuela. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Simon, I don't know if he can answer this question because you can't pick a favorite owner, can you? <laughs> nah, a lot of great, great, a lot of great owners out here. Yeah. Uh, it's a ton of them I'd love to ride for. After the Belmont ex Rapoli Exacta with, with Todd, was there a party after that for you guys? Not really, no. Maybe they they, they went dinner or something, but honestly, it's a long, tiring day for us. When I finish, <laughs> I just want to eat something quick and go home. No, I don't blame you. Yeah. Sherry, do you have a favorite track to ride at? Belmont, without Belmont. a doubt. There it's you very, go. Very, it's very fair, wide turns, great turf course. It's very fair. How many, how, that's, this title you just took is not your first. How many titles have you taken there specifically at Belmont? Ugh. Oh, see, you've uh, forgotten. Look at that. Like, like uh, oh, I, I don't know. Let me think about it. <laughs> uh, no, out of my head, probably four, maybe uh, four, three or four. Yeah. And I think it's your 12th overall. 
Maybe. Something like that. I don't know. It's crazy good. Okay, I know. Let's see here. We're going to have to wrap this up, people. So if you have any further questions, get them in now because this man is in demand. Yep. Let's see here. I've got Richard. Big fan of Regal Glory. Any thoughts on in Italian? Can she win this year? Yeah, Riga Glory, uh, amazing. Uh, oh, hi, cutie. <laughs> uh, in Italian, of course. The other day, the track was a little bit soft. I think that plays against her. And mm -hmm. yeah, she's a nice filly. I'm sure Charlie's gonna regroup and get it back on track. I think she'll be a big. Yes, go. Aww. I think she'd be a big contender on the division again this year. Yeah, she's, how about she's great? Uh, how about any of the other big older horses that you've been riding too? How are they all doing? Uh, what are I mean? Do you have anything coming up in the next two weeks that we should be looking out for? Uh, honestly, I don't keep that good of a track. I let my agent do that job. I just <laughs> go ride whatever they put me on. Just get uh, me in the saddle, right? That horse, uh, the horse that just won the Belmont Derby, what's his name? Uh, uh, uh Farbridge. Far Bridge. Yeah. Farbridge. That's, that's the horse that is exciting right now. You hear that? Oh, who barbecues better, you or Irad? Me, Irad don't cook at all. <laughs> uh, also, He's a first bout Hall of Famer. Who wins the Eclipse this year? I, I think we got to wait and see, right? Until the end of the year, who gets the Eclipse? Yeah. You look at stats right now. I think Ira already passed 20 million, so he's on pace to break his own record. And that will wow. that's, make it the, fav that making the favorite. That, that's incredible. I, I mean, and not only like the success you've had, but the, the fact I don't know statistically in our sport where we've seen two brothers or siblings at all I mean, perform to top level consistently in the way in which you guys do. Do you guys keep each other accountable or do you guys like work out together? I mean, no, sometimes we work out together, but most of the time we spend time together. Right now, I'm at, I'm at his house right now. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, that's yeah. great. We okay. spent a lot of time, a lot of time together. Oh, I love that. Well, Lana is saying thanks for the picture at the Ocala April sale. Hashtag big walk. Okay. And guys, I'm going to start wrapping this up so he can spend some family time and get ready for this crazy week. How many, he's got mounts galore. You can check them all out at equabase.com and you'll see it's nuts. I don't know how you, I don't know how you go about the day, honestly, you guys, um, but let's see here. Simon's asking, if you could ride any European horse at the Breeders' Cup this year, who would it be? I, think I don't to... know him well. I don't know him yeah. well. Yeah. We got to wait and see. I don't know their horses well. Yeah. Honestly, it's very hard to keep track with, with them horses. And, and you never know who's going to be brought over. Exactly. That's the other thing. But mostly I know well the Golovin horses. Yeah. I mean, if I want to ride anyone, that would be Equinox. Oh my gosh, horses. I know. <laughs> Do you know? I want. I was. I thought that horse. Well, I, he's I from know. Japan, right? Yeah, yep. and I know it's a pipe dream because here's the thing. I, I wanted him to come over, obviously, for the Breeders' Cup, but I would love to see him not just come for the Breeders' Cup, but the Breeders' Cup Classic because I think that horse could run on dirt. He's Sunday Silence. He's a Sunday Silence sire line horse, and he's just that type of. I mean, for example, going back to Giants Causeway, we saw him come over here and run really well in our classic. Yeah. Um, I just think class is class, and he has enough in the pedigree to prove that. Out. But I, I don't think he's coming over at all because I believe he's targeting the Japan Cup. Um, I believe because he won the Shima Classic, there's a $3 million bonus if he can make that uh, Shima Classic Japan Cup double. So I don't think he's coming over, which Maybe. selfishly... I'm sad about uh, Sherry saying, thank you, Jose. Uh, Loloy Baloyloy is saying hello to Arad then too. I always say Arad. I don't know why. I just, I think it's because my dad is from Iraq and we say that like an eh sound. So I'm so used to it. I say Arad instead of Arad. Um, yeah. Abdi saying greeting from Toronto. Awesome having you, Jose. 
They're awesome. You're having those. Yes. His time is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Good luck and God bless. And I mean, yeah, to get a little more specific before we let you go, how are the ribs feeling today? Good. I think I'm ready to come back. Uh, I'm getting on some horses in the morning pain free, which is the most important thing. Hopefully tomorrow is a long day. So we'll see how my body reacts to longer days. But taking it day by day, uh, doing what I'm supposed to do in my recovery. But every day I improve a little bit more. I Have feel you... like I'm ready. Have a lot of people been reaching out to you, asking how you are? and Oh, uh, ton. Yeah. Ton. Yeah, I appreciate you all. Everybody asking, reaching out. Uh, and yeah. I mean, the racing family is big, and uh, they all show up when when you when you need it. So um, I, I appreciate that. No, well, we appreciate you, and I can't thank you enough for for spending this amount of time with us today. And I look forward to seeing more from you. Um, Matt and I are actually going to be up at Saratoga uh, Whitney Week, so that's always exciting that whole okay. week. And um, again, you've just always been so generous with your time and your insight, and I'm so thankful that you're okay because, again, that was horrific looking um but yeah. we yeah i mean your fortitude mentally and physically i i think it says a lot mm, thank you <laughs> all right everybody this has been your future stars forecast with already a bona fide star talking about jose ortiz be back here next week for your future stars forecast in the meantime talk to you later